The following presentation was recorded live for the 18th Annual Convention of Caller Lab. We take you live to the Aladdin Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, where our session is just getting underway. Our moderator for this afternoon is Jim Wheeler. Jim Wheeler <laughs> resides in Orchard Park, New York, home of the Buffalo Bills, with his wife, Lene. He called his first square dance in 1958 and was called in 15 states and Canada and is currently calling square dances for three clubs in the Buffalo area. He travels regionally in New York, Pennsylvania, and Ontario and calls one-nighters for beginners locally. Jim writes a regular feature, The Caller's Corner, for the Western New York Square Dance publication and has also been published in American Square Dance. Jim records with Red Boot Productions. Jim is the department chair for the Department of Office Technology, Erie Community College, South Campus, where he teaches communications and interpersonal relationships. He is also on the staff of the American Institute of Banking and has served as a consultant to organizations throughout the United States and Canada, presenting seminars and workshop in the areas of communication public relations, and interpersonal relations. He has been a guest speaker at professional civic and social functions from Florida to Michigan and Nevada to Massachusetts and has made previous presentations at the Color Lab Partner Station. Mr. Jim Wheeler. Thank you, Karen. Where did you get all that information? Just the way I wrote it, yes, thank you. The way we're set up, it kind of looks like it's us against you. It's not really that way. This is a cooperative venture. We want you to participate. We're going to have these folks up here participating. And the purpose of this session is to provide all of us with helpful information on how to make our partnerships a winning one. Our panelists will provide us with some techniques, discuss hints and tools of the trade that have helped real people survive and succeed in a very unreal situation. After our distinguished panelists have had an opportunity to respond, you're all distinguished, you know that? To some prepared questions, then you will have a chance to ask questions of them. Since this session is recorded, we do ask that you use a floor mic, and we'll have it back here set up for you. It's all set up now, ready to go. We encourage your participation, want your participation. Our first couple, and we'll introduce them alphabetically, Stan and Kathy Burdick, the extreme left, have been co-editors of American Square Dance Magazine for 23 years. Stan has been calling for 43 years and has attended all the Caller Lab conventions since 1977. Thank you. He is currently serving his third term on the Board of Governors. Stan and Kathy are presently chair people of Legacy and have keynoted leadership seminars all over the United States. Stan also records for Red Root Productions. We outnumber them, Stan. Square dancing has afforded the Burdicks the pleasant opportunity of touring the world with square dancers, cruising the North American waters, and dancing in the Great Wall of China. How about a nice hand for Stan and Kathy? <laughs> Next, alphabetically, Tony and Sue Oxendine. They reside in Sumter, South Carolina. Isn't that where the uh, Star Spangled? Fort Sumter. That's in a different state. Different city. Okay, same state. Technical. Tony is on the Caller Lab Board of Governors and has been calling for 17 years, 12 of those full-time. He travels extensively throughout the world and is currently recording on Royal Records. Tony and Sue have been married five and a half years and are the parents of two children. Susan is the silent partner in this dynamic duo and is a manager for the Tupperware Corporation. Susan enjoys decorating, learning to play golf, and cooking. Does anybody ever play? We all learn to play all the time, right? Tony is also into golf, computers, and reading bestsellers. Tony and Susan Oxendine. <laughs> At the age of six... Keith Ripido moved from Estes Park, Colorado to Lubbock, West Virginia, where he met a little girl named Karen. <laughs> <laughs> he followed her to school one day, and the next day, and the next, and Keith and Karen were married while Keith was in college and Karen a high school senior. Thirty-two years later, Karen and Keith are still married. 
traveling and working together as a team. They have three children, three grandchildren, with a fourth due in May and a fifth expected in September. Grandchildren, grandchildren. <laughs> Keith has been employed full time for EI DuPont for 28 years, where he is an engineer. Keith and Karen have been square dancing for 22 years and Keith calling for the last 17. He calls for a home program about four nights a week, travels every weekend, and with Karen hosts six festivals a year. Keith also records on Ranch House Records. Karen travels with Keith most of the time and serves as his business manager and secretary. Keith and Karen have called in 37 states, including Hawaii and Alaska. In addition, they serve as travel agents for a California firm, setting up trips for callers and cures throughout the country. Keith has been an active member of Caller Lab since 1978 and currently serves on the Board of Governors. Karen has attended, with Keith, every Caller Lab convention since 1978, serving as the chair of the Partners Committee for the past three years. As we can see, they are very much involved in the Square Dance world and believe in working together as a team. Karen and Keith. <laughs> Sounds like a newlywed game. The fourth couple on our panel, Mike and Gail Seastrom. They've been married for 20 years. They met in high school, and they won't tell us how many years ago that was. Mike was already calling full-time, and since he played on the varsity football team on Friday nights and called on, on most Saturday nights, Gail quickly learned how to dance since she was ineligible to play football. <laughs> since that time, square dancing has been a part of their lives, one in which they always participate as a couple. Mike has been calling for 28 years. He, since he is a practicing dentist, calling is an avocation rather than a full-time profession. In addition to calling regularly for local clubs, Mike travels extensively throughout the year, doing dances and festivals nationally and internationally. Mike also records for Rhythm Records. Gail is a registered dental assistant and works with Mike in the office. She is also the mother of two active boys, Mark 13 and Jimmy 8. As all moms, Gail is a taxi driver, errand runner, cook, laundress, secretary, and also teaches art at Jimmy's Elementary School. Busy lady. Gail is also responsible for all of Mike's square dance bookings, as well as making travel arrangements, catering after parties at their festivals, and setting up tours. Mike and Gail feel square dancing very much a couple's activity, and try to attend together with the help of grandparents willing to live in during their absences. Lucky couple. Mike and Gail are able to travel together most of the time. It takes a great deal of teamwork, patience, and a sense of humor when things get crazy. But so far it has worked. Mike and Gail Seastrom. Some of the prepared questions originally appeared in the July 1986 issue of American Square Dance Magazine in an article written by Peggy Christian. So if they sound familiar, they are. But well, we're going to get some answers to some of the other things. Our first question, because of the social nature of our business, it is sometimes difficult to separate our professional lives, family, and social life. What techniques do you use to maintain a balance among your professions, family life, and successful marriage? And I think we'll start in inverse order. Mike, Gail? Um, one of the things that we have chosen to do is not to combine square dancing with our children. Uh, our kids' activities are our kids' activities. We do not take them to dances. That is our choice. And that is their choice, too. Uh, we have many friends that are not square dancers, and we make a concerted effort to spend time with them. And square dancing is an activity all in itself, which is something we enjoy as much as the other things. But we find that it works best for us, and it's easier for us to keep a balance in our life and not get really crazy if we try to make a division between all the activities that are going on. I think the other thing, and probably a lot of you, when you set up your calendars, you years in advance, you cross off all the birthdays and all the anniversaries and all the family days that everybody puts together. You make sure that those get crossed off your calendar or crossed out, so you're not booking those. Um, it's uh, it's kind of disconcerting when you're uh, when you're booked away for the weekend and it's uh, it's Mother's Day or it's Father's Day or something like that. So we make sure that those family days are crossed out ahead of time. And the the other thing is that I feel real strongly as a caller that that uh, because so much of our attention is shared in other directions that particularly when we have an anniversary or when we have a weekend off and we have a chance to get away together as a couple or to get away together as a family, we try to make that effort to make time for us, whether it's just Gail and I or whether it's our entire family. 
And if we don't in a while, we realize that we're due. You, you, you've probably experienced the same thing. You realize you're due to get away from it all, to get away from some of the responsibility, and just be together. And I think that's real important. Jim? Well, in verse order would be with the toes. In verse order. You're running the show again, aren't you? Um. We have always tried, if Keith could not be at something as the children were growing up, one of us was always there. If it meant he couldn't be, I've attended many, many father-son banquets. <laughs> the school schedule doesn't seem to go along with your calling schedule. You don't know far enough ahead that you can book accordingly sometimes. Our children have never went without one parent that was there. Uh, one thing that Keith and I do that has been real successful weekends that we have in Florida or here at Color Lab, we always try to combine vacation with that so that it's all not work. It's a relaxing time that we have to kind of rejuvenate and do things for just me and him. And it's worked real well over the years. Well, it worked this weekend because I won some money. <laughs> and that will start your weekend out good anyhow. But... Uh, I, the, the only thing I can say uh, in defense of uh, um, being busy uh, and working a full-time job and, and calling as much as I do is uh, there are a couple things that I do regret uh, missing. And uh, if, if you're new at this or if you've got young children still at home, I strongly suggest that you make sure that if they're in an activity, you know what's going on in that activity and do what you can to avoid a conflict with your calling. And in, in a lot of cases, it might be better to, to ask for a cancellation and, and, and go enjoy your children. Now, our kids love us, and they've been to Hawaii three times and the Caribbean twice. And, uh, you know, not many kids can say that besides being all over the world. But square dancing has been great to us and our kids. We uh, One example is when our daughter got married, we had people that offered them condos down in Florida and everywhere else to go on their honeymoon. That's important. But more important is... Uh, realizing and separating the two of them and, and I let Karen do all my bookings anymore so I'm not responsible if we screw up <laughs> well okay um, I guess with us it's, it's just really different um, Tony's calling is definitely a, a full-time career there's a lot of times when if it weren't for long distance he wouldn't know what was going on at home um, where he does travel extensively and he's gone so long, a lot of the responsibility of the home and the children does fall on me. Uh, and I do have to take care of things and take care of the children and, and catch him up on what all he's missed when he comes home. You know, he's been gone two or three weeks. Uh, finding time for ourselves is very hard for us to do. Um, sometimes that may be at 2 o'clock in the morning. I mean, you know, we sit down and catch up for a week. Um, there are a lot of pleasures in this business and it has allowed us to do a lot of things as a family and as a couple that we would not have been able to do otherwise. Uh, I think the biggest thing for us is just juggling what little bit of time we have into good quality time. And I'm a firm believer that if you don't have a lot of time, try to take what little bit of time you have and make it good quality time. And that's what we try to do as a family and as a couple. Yeah. Uh, both of us make a, a real intense effort to keep the, the business side of, of, of our life away from the personal side uh, it's probably terrible but when when I have a night off chances are we're not going to go to a square dance uh, we're going to stay home uh, and do a lot of the things that that other families get to do you know we like to cook out and we like to rent movies and watch movies with the kids and and uh, we don't we don't do a whole lot of socializing uh, because I'm gone so much when I come home pretty much everything we do we do as a family and and so consequently both of us, pretty much all of my friends are in square dancing, uh, and it's about the same with Susan, except with, she's doing Tupperware now, so she's got she's got the outside people. But as far as the two of us, uh, all of our friends are, are somewhere in the activity. So when we stay home and we're away from the activity, we're kind of just stuck with just being me and her and the, and the kids, and it's and it's really good for us because, it, like she said, it enables us to to the, have quality time. It may not be as much time as as some of you guys are fortunate to have with your families, but but it's good time. We, we really enjoy it with, with the kids and, and with each other. This will probably be a repeat of the, uh, some of the other three. 
because like the Seastrums, we always mark off special events on the calendar. And we haven't always celebrated the event on the exact day, but at least we celebrate it the day before or the day after or something like that. But it is there, and we have marked off vacation time. We've stayed active with, with other activities. Um, we've both been very active in our church. We play bridge. Since we are never available to socialize on a Saturday evening, we're very fortunate to have a close friends who will get together during the week in the evening and do things. So that's been a boon to us, and they're very good friends. We, too, like movies and doing other things, and we don't go out and square dance when Stan has a night off. Um, I think one of the other things that's important for partners is to be sure they find time for themselves. And um, I've been a Girl Scout all my life, and I guess I always will be because not too long ago they gave me a life membership, so there's no out now. But that has meant a lot to me over the years and kept me busy while Stan was on the road. I have to admit that when he went from being a, a caller who called in the evenings after his job with the YMCA to a full-time caller when we also had the magazine, it was a little bit of a tough transition. And so you find ways to adapt and things to do. And like the others too, when he came home, well, he'll probably make his, his perennial comment on that. But when he came home, we would have quality time. And a tip to you if you still have small children, one of the things we always did when the kids were small was to have family conferences. And I can't really emphasize, I think that's very important to sit down and talk things over. And we, would, we don't have to schedule time to talk now because we spend time in the car and, and times in the office and things like that. But when we had five people to schedule, we had to really set a time and say, at 7 o'clock this Sunday evening, we will sit down and talk. And we did. And we talked about their problems and our problems and what was coming up, and it worked. So I passed that on as a real good tip for family communication. Amen. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's hard to be the last one on the dais because some other good things have been said, and it's almost like repetition. But I've always felt that it's important for all of us to have a broad base of interest and and I would I would simply urge that people do have a number of activities that they share together and also that they share alone I remember when we were first married we used to read passages from Khalil Gibran am I saying that right many of you know about his books and one of the things that it said which always impressed us was that there has to be some space between you and I thought you know that's that's good in other words, you don't always crowd each other. Uh, you don't work too closely. You're apart, and it's so nice to have a reunion again. And maybe we ought to say just a word to, or two about affection. Some uh, writers and, and uh, speakers will say to you that, you know, it's almost like some people have lost the art of the uh, affection that goes when you're dating. And isn't it nice, and this is again a quote, when a guy can, across a crowded room, smile and wink at his, at his wife, as if they were still dating and love and all that. And I think this is so important. Uh, Elmer Sheffield said, uh, first thing every morning, last thing every night, well, maybe that's what we do with a kiss. You know, you thought about this, that a kiss in the morning and a kiss at night, we try to do that. Sometimes we go to sleep quickly. I'm older, but, <laughs> but it's still, it's still, it's still a, a good idea. And so I, I'd simply say have lots of, lots of interests that are uh, common and ones that are apart. She likes to uh, knit and crochet and all those things and read a lot. And I, I like to fiddle with my philatelist collection, my stamps and other things that we do separately. And uh, square dancing is sometimes together and sometimes apart and when I'm away. And uh, I think you have to have a balance, as Gail said. That balance is so important. Thank you all. Is there another comment in the, from the panel on that question? Okay. 
If the audience has questions pertaining to this topic, please jot them down. When we get to the end, then we'll have you ask all your questions. You all mentioned some kind of a planning calendar. Is there one person, or do you work on it cooperatively? Uh, who maintains it? Who, set, who sets it? Who crosses off the dates? Who um, makes sure that the calendar makes it work? Anybody? Well, my wife does all the bookings, and I give her all the prices. And that's my responsibility, the, the price, and she does all the booking. So I, I, I do not fool with the book. So what you're saying is that Karen maintains the planning calendar and you go from wherever it is, you go where she tells you to go. <laughs> Mike's business card says Mike's Eastern Square Dance Caller, and then it says call Gail because I do all of the booking for Mike because it's much easier for me to say no than it is for him. In fact, I practice with him in front of the mirror and say, gee, I'm sorry, I can't make it. No, I'm not available, and it hasn't worked, so I do all the booking. I also keep the calendar at home because I know the scout schedule, the soccer schedule, the bowling schedule. We also keep calendars in the office. We have a patient schedule. We have continuing education courses. So we find that we overlap quite a bit. We try as a family on Sunday at dinner to say what's happening next week because as our sons get older they have more and more activities that requires one of the parents to at least drive them to or attend with them. Mike has a calendar he keeps personally with regards to the dental profession and things that he is required to be at with regards to that. But we have one central calendar that is kept in the kitchen that lists everything that everybody's doing and I mean these boxes are like really big because some days are really full. But if it doesn't get on the calendar that I'm really sorry. <laughs> and there have been times that somebody, one of the kids said, gee, Mom, I'm, I'm supposed to be at so-and-so. And I'm saying, I'm really sorry because someone else is going this way and someone else is going that way. So it, it takes uh, contribution from everybody. It takes us being interested in what the children are doing so that they feel that what they're doing is as important as the time that we need to have scheduled. And uh, it just takes a lot of communication in order for everybody to be able to be where they have to be and all the responsibilities fulfilled, but in terms of the calendar, I basically take care of all of that. I, I do everything. <laughs> no. Uh, primarily, it started out, Susan did all of it. She did the, the talk. I wouldn't even talk to people on the phone. Uh, I found that, that the wife, just like Gail said, it's easier for the wife to say no if there's a problem with whatever the date may be with the, the people. Uh, the people won't get mad at the wife like they would get mad at, at the caller. Uh, I don't understand why that is. Susan can tell people things and they don't get mad at her. If I told them the same thing, they would they'd really, very get mad. Yeah, it's the accent. Uh, however, uh, in, in my situation, uh, you know, naturally we try to book me as much as we can. You know, it, I work about 300 days a year. I call about 300 dates a year, so um, no, it's not work. I love my I love my job. It's fun. It's my hobby. Um, so we consequently we we try to book me out a lot. Uh, I'm not. I thought I think I'm home on Father's Day. Am I gone this far? I was. I'm home on Easter. I'm home on Easter and I'm home on Thanksgiving and I'm home on Christmas. I know that. Uh, but here lately, since Susan started doing Tupperware, it's taken quite a bit of her time. So I've been trying to go through the mail and then I look at it and I mark down yes or no or you know how much it is and. And if I want to do it, and then she does most, she does all of the most of the physical typing of the letter, getting it out, and 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 I'll, she still talks to people on the phone. So I don't talk to anybody on the phone. Let me add that um, uh, with me helping out, okay, with me doing my business, it's not working good. I'm not used to this. He helps me out with everything. Still um, really minded. But when we do get a lot of phone calls, and I have to take care of a lot of the, his end of the business, um, he's good at long distance calling and saying, what do I do when I do, don't know what, how to handle a certain thing? And I'm not good at geography, so a lot of times I don't know where certain things are. Mm. And he may have a really hard trip if I don't have that atlas right there and if I take somebody's word and say two hours. So, you know, you have to do a lot of double checking on dating, especially if you women are just starting out. Get yourself an atlas and, you know, keep those things close so you'll know. Um, but like I said, he's, he's helped it 
you know, added a lot more the last year, and it, it let him become more involved with it. I think he needs that. You know, Colin needs to know. I really, I really got out of touch with it because I didn't do anything with my calendar. She did the whole thing, and consequently, people ask me if I'm coming into the area, and, and I wouldn't have any idea. You know, I'd tell them, call home. You know, now I have, although I couldn't tell you my schedule, I have a vague idea of, of when I'm going to be in a particular area or a particular group. So it, it does help that I'm involved in a, in a small way with it now. Are we done now, honey? Okay. <laughs> we, our dancers have a joke at home, and it's really not a joke, but a lot of times with Keith working a full-time job, besides this, he asks at the point we pull out of the driveway, do I go right or left? <laughs> and basically the reason I do do the scheduling, one, He's very forgetful, and someone gives him something, a date at a dance, and he'll stick it somewhere in his briefcase, and I never see it again. <laughs> and the second thing is, maintaining a full-time job, it's just literally impossible for him to work the hours he does and keep up with his book work. I'm not forgetful. <laughs> Karen has a saying, and I, uh, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to anyhow that I do three things. No, don't say that. No, don't say. I won't say it. <laughs> okay, Stan says I should tell you about the cartoon that's in the office that's Hey Got a Horrible. That's one of my favorites. And uh, his wife, somebody is saying to his wife, did you know when you married Hagar that he would be on the road all the time? And she says, no, I guess I just lucked out. <laughs> I'll, I'll follow that up by saying that he does his own booking and listening to the others say that they can't say no, now I know why he sometimes has such a crazy schedule because um, I've said for years that if I were booking it, he would have been home a little more in between because I, wouldn't, I would not have attempted some of the strange communications he's had or what do I want to say, point to point destinations he's had over the years. But what we have done is to keep two calendars. I keep a calendar, he keeps a calendar, and periodically we sit down and bring them up to date so that when somebody calls, I know whether he has the date free, but I do not quote or anything. I'll just take a note and leave it for him when he comes back. So he does his booking, but we keep a, a duplicate calendar going all the time, and I think that's a good idea. No, that's fine. Mike has another comment. No, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that, um, Kathy, because Gail and I at one time had tried to keep a duplicate calendar, and it didn't work for us. We had a heck of a time because I, I, had, a, I had a real hard time. <laughs> Consequently, I do not carry a calendar with me on the road. I, I take notes, and I stick them in my pocket of my coat, and when I get back to the hotel or back home, they all get out of the desk, and they get put in a pile, and we go through the notes. But it was really difficult for us to do it, and I admire you guys that you, could, that you can keep track because we had a hard time, and that's when it really finally became. We communicate quite a bit about the bookings, and, and because Gail is, um, has a hard time with geography, too, we have to sit down and work that out, too. But it, 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 it is, I think you have to kind of look, and, and if you can do it, terrific. It, it's a real help, because then both of you can be involved, and it's that communication that, that, that can make that work. But it didn't work very well for us. <laughs> okay. Stan, since you were last before, we're going to make you first this time. In any relationship, conflicts between professional and personal demands arise. What do you do to resolve those conflicts? What do you do to minimize the effects of these conflicts and maximize the benefits of your actions? That's a tough question. That really is tough. I think that, you know, time heals all wounds and and sometimes even a short space of time uh, helps to get you over the hurdle. Sometimes you need to, again, be apart, just, even just for a short time. Um, I can remember a couple of times, Kathy will kill me for saying this, I can remember a couple of times when she has jumped in the car and taken off. But she always comes back. That's, <laughs> that's the nice thing. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> And, you know, I guess everybody has to work out their own uh, solution to these problems. We do have conflicts. 
sometimes, well, after some 35 plus years, uh, you, you learn to, to work out these things in your own way. Um, but maybe it's just good now and then to just get away from each other purposely and then come back. And, um, and I think this is really the best method for us. Um, and then, of course, bury ourselves in some of the things that we do personally. Um, I mentioned my stamps before and my interest in uh, artwork and cartooning and so forth. And I have two areas in our, we have an office in this little uh, area and we have a big four car garage over here that has lots of, of uh, mainly books that are getting prepared to be sold and so forth. And then behind it all, there's a curtain and I have a couple of little areas where I could go and hide and you, you wouldn't believe it. Um, I, could, I have loads of things there that are just kind of my personal things. I like paintings and I have a lot of uh, artwork and some framed stuff and, and I can go and kind of be by myself, kind of in a solitude situation. But it doesn't last long because soon enough uh, that little difficulty, that little pain or whatever it is, uh, disagreement, uh, kind of just melts away and I'm back or we're back together. And so it's never lasted long, thank goodness. And, and I think maybe that's the best solution to these kind of problems that, that you're surely going to have. Everybody does. One of the things that I wrote down when we got these questions in advance was that we shouldn't let resentment smolder, um, that you should let it out and, and communicate. Uh, though anyone in the room who knows me knows if I'm upset about something, um, I have a hard time hiding it. So maybe that's helped because uh, I'm apt to explode and then calm down again after a while. But uh, I think it's important to talk things over. I think once one partner in a relationship begins to, to build up resentment that it escalates and destroys something that you've had, that it's much better to talk things out, even if you have to schedule, as we were saying the first time, schedule a time to talk. Um, I'm not sure. Jim, when you asked us this, did you mean just um, problems, no, conflict it, it, it was between a, the couples? Not or? necessarily. Okay. Between the demands that are placed on your personal life and your professional life, but you can go any, any place you want to with it. Well, sometimes there are some other conflicts, and I didn't know whether you wanted to get into that or not, because right. sometimes there are, are caller dancer conflicts that are hard to resolve, and you have to work hard at those. Would, would you please address that issue? I don't know if I can too well. <laughs> um, I think probably everyone's problems are different uh, as far as... Uh, the kinds of conflicts that arise, they arise over different things. I don't think any caller goes for any length of time without having some somewhere. Whether you're a traveling caller and are running into something on the road. For instance, did you know that if anything happens to a caller on the way to a dance that he isn't able to get there, he almost never is booked back in that area again? Including surgery, uh, car accidents, anything. It's a, we were talking about it again just the other day. It's a strange phenomenon because we're all human and we cannot get there. And I don't have an answer to that one because Dan has some that I know of that have never been resolved. Uh, he went into the hospital one night with a detached retina and had it repaired, was not able to be in a state about five states away from us the next night. He had called in that club for 14 years in a row and never got booked back. Uh, it hurts a little, and I think we all feel that and know it. I guess you learn after you've been in a long time, and I know this doesn't help if you're just starting out or just been calling a few years. After a while, you just learn to roll with the punches. I don't know that there are any answers. When there is out-and-out -out conflict, you can work on it. You can use all the, all the uh, possibilities at your disposal to work out a conflict, but when, it, when it's an out-and-out -out wall, sort of, I don't know that you can do anything except accept it. And maybe that's where the partner has to be supportive and, and helpful and talk things over and be there. But sometimes there are no, we don't have any good answers. Thank you for sharing that. Next. Well, 
in a, in a case uh, that we have, or the way I feel about it is, this is my best critic, and I, we've all been told that, you know, that your, your, your spouse is your best critic. I don't think a lot of us really take that seriously. Uh, uh, I've seen cases where the spouse was telling their, their uh, calling partner that uh, you shouldn't be doing that, and they're saying, what do you know about it? Well, generally, they're more involved with the dancers. Uh, they know what the dancers, they, they know it's something not flowing real well. Or you're, the, put that singing call away, you know. Uh, so many times I get upset when a caller continues to do a, a singing call that he shouldn't be doing. His wife thinks it's the greatest thing in the world. And, and she, or she doesn't like it, but she won't say anything. And he's, they're hurting both of them. The only other thing that I can say on personal, uh, Karen and I have had our problems just like everyone. But she's my best friend. And that's more important to me than, than anything else that I could say. If you are best friends, you'll solve those problems. You'll get mad. I, I, incidentally, I'm the one that jumps in the car and drives, takes off. <laughs> and always come back. Okay, but uh, uh, that's important, and, and resolving those, and, and uh, we've been able to do it for a long period of time, and, and I'm amazed that we can do it, having three children that were very active in sports and band and everything else, and her going one way and we going the other. We've had two and three cars in our family ever since we, I can remember. <laughs> Who? I, I'm not holding it. Have we got somebody up there working on it? Okay. All right. That's all I got. Uh, I guess the only comment I have is through a lot of the partner stations over the years, I've heard women say if something was upsetting them or they heard something upsetting dancers at a dance, I never tell my caller partner that to upset him. I wait until on the way home. Uh, that's not in our case. <laughs> If there's something upsetting me or something upsetting a dancer, he can't do anything about it if he doesn't know about it until we're on our way home. And, you know, if it's something I feel he can resolve at the dance, then I tell him. And it's not being nasty or trying to upset him. It's just trying to solve the problem that's there. And it's worked real well. And I resent it every time she does it. <laughs> I'm telling it like it is. Am I, am I telling the truth? Yes. Sure. Yes. But but once I go to the restroom or uh, you know do something, and then I realize that yes, right, I get in the car. I can't go driving nowhere. See, but <laughs> so you go to the restroom. But it's real. I think that's important. Very important. I do resent it at the time she's telling me, and she'll tell you. She, I give her dirty looks, you know. But eventually, I I, I judge what should be done. Well, I guess for us, all my friends really tease me, and they say, gosh, how do you do it? Your husband's gone all the time. You know, how do you live like that? Unfortunately for me, I have a lot of military wives that are, you know, in our subdivision, and their husbands are always gone TDY, and they always ask me, aren't you military too? <laughs> no. Um, but, you know, the good thing about that is you really, you know, and I tell people, we really don't have time to fight. You know, and if we took all of our time fighting, we're not going to have much time for anything else. And I'm not saying we never fight. I just try to make it long distance if I can. <laughs> it can't get, you know, it can't do quite as much damage I that way. Never um, or if it gets, things get real bad, we'll just date another dance, you know, and a add an extra day, give him time to calm down. Um, <laughs> that's why you're gone so much. Those might be the ones that are 500 miles apart. apart. <laughs> that's it. Um, two, as far as conflicts and all at dances, uh, I don't get to go with Tony as much, you know, as before. And as far as dealing with time between us and and all, I think that's why I chose a different career. I needed something different than just being home answering his calls and dealing with everyday problems with the children. I kind of needed something for myself too. Um, and I'm a very active person. I, you know, I take a lot of stresses and I, I deal with them sometimes not real well, but the best I can. If they, if they get real bad, we just add something else. But um, <laughs> but things will get hectic. As far as at Tony's dances, though, if I hear something that upsets me, or you know, if, if I hear something that you know I think Tony should know, or whatever, you know, I may 
first first thing I do is always say, well, you know, is this really a problem? <laughs> Maybe I, it's from being from the South, I really don't think there are any problems at a dance. I think everybody's happy, they're having a good time. There's just not any problems. And, uh, and I treat those dances that way. I treat them as everybody's there for the same purpose. They're there to have a good time. And I feel like it's my husband's job to, to make sure that everybody has a good time. And I do look at Tony's calling as his job. And I look at it, you know, and say, well, you know, he needs to be up there and he makes, needs to make sure everybody has a good time. They usually don't tell me if they don't have a good time, you know, because I'll tell them what they need to do to have fun. But, um, you know, Tony handles that part real well, and he, he really does. We don't get a lot of complaints at dances, you know, maybe with some of the bookings and all. And Tony and I very seldom will fight about the bookings. I mean, you know, he may try to blame me, and I'll try to blame him for, you know, a few minutes, but then we just work it out. You can't, you can't go get anything done when you're totally blaming each other all the time. Yeah. Um, the, the, the problems that Susan and I share are probably uh, not unique to, to full-time callers. I imagine everybody's got some of the, the problems that, that we have. Uh, the personal problems are, are no more than anybody else. We fight about money. We fight about, you know, the things that... Who? The dog. Yeah, the, the car. Yeah, I had a dog that ate my lawnmower. Ate, ate the wheels off my lawnmower, and they wouldn't let me, my family wouldn't let me give him away. We fought, we fought like, like cats and dogs over that dog. But anyway, uh, you know, naturally we fight over the things that, that most people fight over. We have the same problems, I think, you know, everybody. However, I, I, you know, being full, full-time callers uh, have some problems that are unique to being full-time callers. Uh, the business problems we don't normally fight over. Uh, we both look upon it when I go out to do a dance. We both look upon it as I'm going to work, just as if I had an eight to five job. Uh, I look upon it as I'm going to work. I, I'm very fortunate in the fact that I enjoy my job, but I do treat it as if I'm going to work that day. And Susan looks upon it that way. Consequently, we don't argue too much about about the business part of it. I don't even argue too much when she schedules me. Way, way across. I just drove back to South Carolina from almost in Miami the other day. Could not find a hotel room. Drove, how many miles was it? 600 something miles. Got home at 9 o'clock in the morning. But those happen. I can't get mad at her for that. Um, so we try, we make a real intense effort to keep the business part away from the personal things. Uh, and I don't know that we ever hardly fight over the, the, the business part. The only problem that we did have, and, and maybe some of you guys may share it, uh, we had a slight problem uh, involving my money and her money. That sounds, sounds doesn't sound the way I want it to sound. Susan wanted to have her money. That's why she's doing this Tupperware now. Uh, she had a problem with I brought home if I brought home the money and I was the only person bringing home money for the first five years of our marriage. Uh, right. And Susan, Susan Susan's always had a job prior to, to we get to us getting married, and then then I made her quit because. You know, I needed somebody to take care of me. I can do all this stuff. You know, I'm, I'm trying to make babies and, and call dances. And, and you know, I, I was just a busy guy. And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, that was the only problem that we had with, with professional lines was Susan wanted, some, wanted her money. And, and I have no problem with that. She's doing her Tupperware, and, and I wish her great success in it. Uh, and, and you guys may run into the same problem uh, you know, I have no problem with it being our money, and and Susan wants like our money, and then she wants her money. <laughs> okay, I said enough. I'll probably be sleeping with fat back tonight. Mike and I uh, not only do all the dances together, but we work together in the office and. For those of you who have been to the dental office, I don't think it's your very favorite thing in the whole wide world. So we deal with a lot of anxiety during the work day. And a lot of times that can carry over to your evening as well. And then we're done. If, if one of us has to walk out of the room, the conversation is over. 20 minutes is enough. We've worked together all day. It's over. But it does get really nuts when you've worked all day. You've seen an emergency. You have to come home. You get, get ready to go someplace. The kids need this. The kids need that. And... We had a day like that recently, and I had put my finger through my pantyhose, and my dress was torn, and da da da. No, nothing was going right. And Mike said, "Come here, come here, come here." We ran in the closet. He said, "I'm going to count to three, and we're going to scream as loud as we can." And so we did. And we opened the door, and these two startled children are standing there. But we felt so much better, and it was. 
I'm the kind of person that just goes off like a firecracker and then I'm fine. And Mike gets very busy and very quiet, so I know that that's the time to leave him alone. We find that we put a limit on how long we are going to have a conflict. It may not be the end of it. We may not have reached a solution, but we have exhausted ourselves at that point and we'll come back when we're calmer and can discuss it. We really, I don't really think that we've had an instance at a dance where we've had conflict that has been a problem. I forgot the original question. <laughs> I understand being down here, Stan. You, you kind of just... What, what? I, I would like to address this, this money thing. It's interesting. I think today, in the 90s, and as well as the late 80s, that it, a caller, as well as in, in any marriage, if something would happen to the... If the man is the primary um, source of, of income in that family, and something should happen to him... Unless the wife has her own checking account, has credit cards in her name, she has no credit. She has, uh, it, it, she has no financial backing. And, and I really honestly believe that you should, uh, a woman should have her own checking account, should have credit in her name, whether it's you both share the card. I mean, I carry around her card, she carries around my cards. <laughs> but I think it works out if something should ever happen to me, then she would have credit in her name, we could handle that. And so we do keep separate accounts, and she has her things, so that if she wants to buy me these nice presents for my birthday or something, you know, I, that works. That's the only comment that I had, and I don't even know if that was the original question. That, that's fine, Mike. Thank you. That's fine, because that really leads into the next question that I have. And let's go back to Susan, because she initially gave us part of an answer. And that is the square dancing. That's square dancing is. <laughs> that's a, I get to he's I been know. on the road too long. <laughs> square dancing is an activity that's dominated by couples, and the square dance community places demands on you as a team. What do each of you, husband and wife, do to maintain and promote the partner, namely in this case the wife's identity as an individual? Well, that's what I did. I, I developed my own business and something that I could have just for myself so that I had an outside interest other than just square dancing. I love, you know, the fact that my husband has a job that he enjoys. It's a couple activity. We don't get an opportunity to go and have a good time as a couple and enjoy a dance and dance and, and laugh. It is a job. You know, a lot of times they're a lot of fun. And I, I see people all over the country that I don't have an opportunity to see but maybe once a year. And I enjoy going for that reason. You know, I enjoy going to see those people, and if I get to dance once or twice, you know, I'm on top of the world. Um, but essentially for us, we had to have something different. You know, I had to have something for myself. I, I couldn't be at home 300 days a year by myself with a calendar, you know, and, and two children and, and a big long-distance phone bill. Um, and because I am so limited in the activity, because we do have small children, I'm not able to go and travel with Tony, you know, 300 days a year. Um, they don't pay spouses airfare. I've never been able to get that yet. Um, so, you know, you, you, when you depend on it as an income, it's not feasible to go economically with your husband everywhere he goes and be that active, supportive partner at a dance. We can't do that. Um, I'm there. I'm a phone call away. <laughs> you know, if he has a problem or needs to check in or needs something at home, we, we do a lot of touching in long distance. That's, that's the deal that we have. You know, we have time for each other. I have to have something for myself, and I think everybody needs that, whether it's you're involved with the church and you're involved with your children's activities. You've got to have something, if your husband is a full-time traveling caller, that you have just for you. You know, something that you do for yourself that gets you involved and makes you feel just as important. You know, you're not any less important than your husband. You have to have something that makes you believe in yourself, too. I think for those of you that work and your husband's call on a local basis, which is a really important job, and you see the same people week after week, you are an accepted part of that activity, and you're, you're thought of as a, a part of that machinery that makes those dances work week to week and makes that club successful, makes that class grow. When you travel out of town, you're excess baggage a lot of times, and, and dancers don't mean that intentionally, but they've hired the caller to dance, so you're just the whistles and bells that came along. 
very often, <laughs> very often, they don't even know who you are, and 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 they don't make an effort to know who you are. And I think it takes a real, you have to really kick yourself to just say, okay, I, you know, I, I'm confident, and I'm I, I belong here, and 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 find your place at that particular dance or that festival. And then there are other times when they go overboard and they really make an effort to to make the colorist partner. Uh, part of that of that festival and they introduce and they see that she's dancing and they and they involve her in whatever activities the caller is involved in but very very often it is the norm that you are the like the silent partner you literally have to assert yourself if that is indeed what you want to do if that if you really want to be part of it and you, and, you know some people get their nose out of joint because they don't get recognized or they don't get introduced but that a lot of that is up to you and how you assert yourself in that situation I think it's, you have to kind of get real confident and sit up straight and, and people will notice you. <laughs> I, I think it's interesting though, as callers over the years when we first start calling, we're, we're, so, we're somewhat uh, new at asserting ourselves and being confident and, and that kind of thing and I think it, it takes a a lot of years to to gain that confidence where you can walk up to anybody and talk to them and and uh, and make things work and add some chemistry and I think that's one of the things that Gail is just extremely well at she's good at being able to um, talk with people and kid people and so very often when I go to dance they say why are you here where's Gail you know <laughs> and and so it, it and it's and I make a point of making sure that she's introduced and making sure that everybody knows that she's got the greatest legs especially when they're dancing and and things like that, just kid, and, and but but try to make her a part of the as much a part of it as I can. I and uh, and I also think that it's important that uh, although we don't get a chance to do this very often, every once in a while we'll just get out and go out and dance and be a dancer and get there after eight o'clock because you don't have to set up any equipment. You can be there late. Yeah, start without you. And it is kind of fun to just go dance. It rejuvenates me as a caller, and I know we don't get a chance to do that very often, but. Um, and usually if we got a night off, we don't go square dancing, but every once in a while we'll get a point where we can get out and dance, and I enjoy to do that too. Okay. Uh, I think one of the problems we have is that, is that the callers tend to be so much louder than their spouses that we tend to overshadow them sometimes. Uh, it's, it's not intentional. It's, just, it's, it's kind of like Mike said. You, you work so hard on this persona that you have on, on the microphone and on the stage to be bigger than life that you tend to cover up a lot of things around you. I, I think it is important if your spouse is, is at a dance with you that she's duly recognized. Uh, unfortunately, most of the time it still doesn't do any good. You guys know as well as I do, they don't ask you to dance. You kind of just sit there. A lot of people say, a lot of people come to me and say, why don't you bring Susan? And I want to tell them because you, she wouldn't enjoy herself. Why would I want to bring here and have her sit down for three hours and watch me call? You know, she, she'd do much better at home. Um, people, dancers tend to forget that. They, they don't realize. Uh, one of the things that I personally think you need, uh, a caller really, no matter how bad you, 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 some guys may stay different, but I really feel like a caller needs a supportive spouse. Uh, she's got to, to try to help him out. Uh, but she also needs to be outgoing enough. If you're just going to sit around and, and, and be a wallflower all night, you're probably not doing either yourself or your your husband any good or your wife any good, whatever the case may be. Uh, sometimes you may have to make the initial effort yourself to to speak to people, just like the caller. Uh, we have to work the floor. You, when you finish the tip, you go and shake hands, you talk to people. Uh, you know, maybe the, the wives, you know, I, I, know, I don't think Susan has a problem. I don't think any of the women on this stage here you know, have a problem talking. You guys have no idea, the spouses, if you've never just picked up one of these microphones, this is scary first time. And, and, and these girls here, they... You know, they, they pretty much get in and say what they say what they mean. They, they mean what they say. And they do that at a dance. Uh, I, I know that, that Gail is very outgoing. I know my wife is outgoing. And, and after working with Keith and Karen for, for years, I know how they are. And you got to be. You couldn't, you, couldn't have been, you couldn't have been with this guy for so long. I see. You write. You write so outgoing. I like, I like reading your magazine for the little hints. Thank you, Tony. But I, I will be the exception. Just take a minute to say this. It doesn't bother me to get up on a panel. Um, I do call a few old-time dances. That scares me half to death, but I do it. But I cannot work a floor of strangers easily. I hate it. I'm shy deep down inside. I don't sound shy, 
I speak up very assertively when I have something to say, but I do not feel comfortable at dances. And frankly, I'm relieved that Stan is on the road and I don't have to go all the time. That may be shocking, but it's true. I, no, I understand exactly what she's saying because it, it really takes an effort. It re, I mean, it's really an effort. And sometimes it, people are not really receptive to you. So you have to just really dig down there and do it. We find a lot of times when it's been a particularly stressful night, and I don't mean that in a negative sense. I mean in the sense that you've really put yourself out there and you've really, you know, met a lot of strangers and tried to be really friendly and, you know, promote yourself and your husband in square dancing. We get in the car and it's like dead silence. And we don't even talk going home. I mean, I like worn myself out, you know. And and they'll say, is there anything wrong? I say, no, I've, I've just used up all my conversation. And you do feel that way sometimes. And other times it just it just flows so easily and, and it's so natural and everybody is so warm. But some nights it is, it is a chore. It truly is. Would you repeat the question, sir? <laughs> I'm not real sure what we're talking about. What do you do to make Karen Karen instead of Mrs. Keith? I don't have to do anything. She does. Uh, the dancers know her better than me. Uh, and I have got plane tickets before that was addressed to her. That's true. I'm telling a true story. Uh, uh, I've been called a, a couple of times. And, and yes. She doesn't interrupt me, though. Uh, uh, there's been a situation where uh, uh, I have a local program, if, if, you, if you will, and I travel on the weekends. I have a local program, and that, that local program may be uh, uh, 150 miles one way uh, that I do. And so and we have a lot of clubs, as Tony will uh, tell you, that, that just thank the world of my wife. I don't have to do anything. They, they do it for me. However, last Sunday I was in uh, the Keystone State. And I don't think they recognized Karen was with me, and even after me telling them. And uh, the first thing that my wife said to me when we got in the car was going down the road, said, well, it's you know, really hard to sit there and, and, and not want to get up and dance and, and be recognized. You know, at least somebody come over. The, it, one guy asked her to dance, and that was the end of it. To that end, we can stop that as callers if we introduce our wife. And I, I made myself a promise going down the road. I used to introduce Karen at every dance. Every dance. I said, my wife is with me tonight, and, and there she is, and so forth. I, didn't, I haven't done that for a long while. But I, I'm going to do that again. I think we can do that. We need to, really need to recognize that. Support it. I'm going to uh, be a little bit personal here and talk about a magazine. You know, everybody needs a feeling of fulfillment, a feeling they've accomplished something, they've done this. We get that, really, from our editing and publishing the magazine. But oftentimes, uh, people don't really realize that Kathy does practically 90% of that magazine. And I go out on the road and they say, great magazine, Stan. And people even here say Stan's Magazine. You've heard him say that. That's unfortunate uh, because if the truth were known, and this is what we'd like to reveal right now, Kathy really does a lot. For instance, the editorial. I haven't written an editorial in 10, 15 years. Kathy writes the editorial. She, <laughs> she writes it for us. And no, she doesn't sign that editorial at all. But I think she may react, but I think there's a certain feel of, of feeling of fulfillment there that she can get from mag. You know, isn't it interesting that editing and publishing a magazine has been said quite a bit is the closest a man gets to giving birth. Now, before you say, you know, there's the birth pangs. I mean, you're you're close to a deadline, and, and you feel that oh golly, man, I, I'll never get through this. You know, you get the birth pangs. And then finally, the deliverance. There's the magazine. Isn't it beautiful? This is mine, all mine. I did it. And you women that uh, have given birth, you know how that feeling is, don't you? A man gets that occasionally when he publishes and edits a magazine. And I get the feeling, even with the 15 or so pages that I'm responsible for in the magazine, she does most of it, all the typesetting and along with our staff. 
and all the choosing of articles, choosing of pictures, and all the creative things that go into magazine publishing. And I'm sure she gets a certain fulfilled feeling from that. I do too when I see some of my cartoons and some of the uh, layouts and some of the covers and so forth. I get that feeling. From so we're lucky in that respect that we both have a feeling of fulfillment when that magazine comes out and we get so proud of it. And everybody needs that. I like what Susan said with, with you know, a separate business sometimes. For some of you, that might be the right ticket. For us, it's the joint fulfillment that we get from a good job with the magazine. But be careful, just a caution to everybody, be careful. She says, I have diarrhea of the mouth. I don't know what that means, but anyway, I'll talk a little bit more and then I'll quit. I think that uh, what you need to find is that kind of thing that fulfills you besides the square dance activity, particularly the spouse, needs to find this kind of thing. We're lucky we have it in our joint effort. After he said that we have it, now can I give my side of it? It's true. It, the work on the magazine is very fulfilling. It's been lots of fun over the years. Uh, there's a great deal of satisfaction in seeing the magazines roll out. Incidentally, there's a lot of satisfaction when people pick up articles uh, and rerun them because they think they're worthwhile. However, that has a downside. And uh, for a sp if a spouse finds something to do that's closely related to square dancing, maybe that's the problem. And Stan hit it, and I'd like to say a little more about it because we I find the satisfaction in seeing the magazine come off in knowing that Stan knows that I do a good job and will say so to people. But let's face it, folks, the whole world out there will not accept the fact that a woman is anything other than a secretary. And I get that on the phone at least once a week. I don't really have anything to add other than Keith said he didn't have to do anything for me. And I guess I would disagree with that because he has made me known to the dancers by always making me his equal. I've never had to feel that I was behind him or following him or trailing along as part of the baggage. He has always made me feel important and therefore the dancers have respected me as being important. So it's something he's done. We are running a little short of time. I do have another question prepared, but I'd rather take questions from the floor. And once again, we have a mic. We'll try to get it around. We have one back here. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Mark Weber from Victoria, B.C. Um, I kind of feel uh, that it's up maybe a little bit to our professional callers to promote the spouses a little more. I don't have a problem in my hometown, but as far as caller lab, I feel it's run by men, uh, and it's not. It's a caller activity, but I hear Stan Burdock. I hear uh, John Colton Thaller. I never hear the wives' names when we, I mean, you don't have to introduce the wives, but it would be nice to hear their names when their spouse is introduced, and I kind of feel that maybe uh, when we have a caller come into our town, we think it's great if his wife comes along. And I kind of think maybe, uh, as far as the professional caller, maybe he could push this a little bit and encourage whoever is hiring him to bring their wife along. And I also think at dances, especially for callers that are traveling, their wives have to be introduced so as the people know who they should go and dance with. But I kind of think now that maybe Caller Lab should start and say, hey, this is the, such and such a caller and his wife is with him and to give her her name so as we at least know the partners. Same with the men. I'm sitting over here with a gentleman spouse and I think he should be introduced or at least mentioned when his wife is. Thank you. Thank you. Another question. G uh, Jim, Jim, let me, let me, Go ahead, let Pete. me say uh, the wives, I've been lucky, okay, uh, let's, I want to make something real clear. I have a very, very strong wife that and that's put up with me, and and we have a, a two-year-old van with 120,000 miles on it, and I work a full-time job, and, and we got two other vehicles. That tells you how much time we're running around in a vehicle beside 
The only time that my wife does not go with me is when it's a family conflict or the airfare is not supplied and, and we don't feel that it's worth the money for her to go along. But she's an ex- I feel she's an exception. Uh, and so, you know, if you can go with your husband, I really would like to see more of that. But I know a lot, in Tony's case and in a lot of other cases, right beside of me here at the verdicts, that can't happen. But I know a lot of wives have told me, I wouldn't go with him like Karen goes with you for nothing. Well, why? I, I, you know, that's, I just want to make sure that you know that I think she's an exception for going all the miles she does with me and putting up with me. Thank you. We have another question. I'm not so sure that it's a question as much as a comment. Someone earlier made the comment that uh, square dancing is a couple activity. But I think with uh, 50% of our marriages ending in divorce and with the increased number of singles clubs that are coming into existence, we have to change our our, our terminology. Our square dancing is an activity with two individuals dancing together as partners. And I think we also have to look at the fact that there are callers' wives, which I am, that when you go into a singles dance or a singles organization, your role as a, as a caller's spouse there is very different than it would be as a caller's spouse in a couple's organization. And I really think that this needs to be addressed. And I think one thing, and I'm not sure this is the proper place to say it, but I'm going to say it anyhow. One thing that I get very concerned about is the use of the call Yellow Rock, uh, particularly in single organizations where you can have a great number of women who have experienced abuse in relationships and those that particular activity puts them in a threatening situation. There's a lo- whole lot of new things happening with singles in the activity and we've got to get a lot uh, better handle on how to include these people in it. Can I read quick response to that? Go ahead, Tony. In both sides of it, uh, I... St- I personally maintain that, that, that square dancing still remains a, a couple-oriented activity. Whether it's two people dancing together, you still assume that's a couple. Whether it's two women or, or, or what, if, if, if it's from a singles group. Uh, there's a big need for uh, singles square dance clubs. I can, I can see that because I feel like the activity is healthy. However, I, I, I must disagree with on the Yellow Rock. I personally don't call it very often. Um, but, but our activity has been pretty much based on, on the fact that this is a form of expression of hello, goodbye, uh, thank you, I enjoyed it, uh, primarily between the man and his corner, if nothing else. But even, even here, among callers, I have seen more men and women hug upon meeting. And that's been ingrained in our activity so long. And I think that the problems that you see with maybe somebody being abused are, are in such a minority that I don't know that you could address the, the problem without making it bigger than what it actually is. Thank you. I'm looking for another comment question. Yes. Good afternoon. My name is Brian Murdoch from Vancouver, British Columbia. I would think at this point in time that maybe we don't give our ladies the opportunities to divulge some of the talents that they have. My wife, fortunately, at this point in time in our marriage, is now her own identity. As we travel, we travel as a couple. On this particular trip, my wife made a presentation this morning, I was the hauler. I was carrying her equipment. And now as we proceed with the balance of our life, I'm into early retirement, we have a home program, but we travel extensively as a couple doing leadership seminars. She is an expert in her own area Quite frequently, she takes the date, and I call the dance. In reverse, I take the dance, and she does her uh, service as well. We offer that as a couple together, because she's a mighty talented lady, and it's only since our children now have become their own persons that we're able to do this together. But I think, fellas and ladies, maybe that partner that we work with, we've never, ever given them the opportunity to be who they are. I think our wives, in many cases, lose their identity. And hey, if it wasn't the two of us working together, I would never survive. Thank you. Thank you. you know, I think there are couples where, where the, uh, 
the spouse or the partner is very, very active and, and, and has the talent to, uh, to express um, herself or himself. And, and, but there may be a situation, maybe some of you where, where as, as the partner, you don't want to become that involved or are not that comfortable in giving your own talks or seminars or whatever. And I think even in, in, in those situations, as well as the situations where, you're, where your partner is, a, is an avid participant, that you have to, and one thing we try to do is, is there's many weekends where I'm gone the whole weekend and she's got the kids and she's very involved at home and running around. And we like to occasionally turn it around where Gail goes away for the weekend, gets together with a friend and she's gone and I got the kids. And it's a real eye opener for me. I really get a keen appreciation for what her life is. So if you've never tried that, let your wife get away for the weekend with a friend or, you know, whoever and, and, uh, and sit down and take care of some of the home things. Oh, not, not who, I didn't mean whoever, you know. Did I, I didn't mean that. Did I, yeah. Yes. No. Did you want to clarify that? No. no. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mike. We have a question back here. I, again, this is probably a comment rather than a question. Maybe it's food for thought. I'd like to address both the issues of her money and recognition. In our Callers Association, we had a very interesting speaker who gave us kind of a startling idea. And that is that this is a team activity. He gets paid to call the dance, but she's every bit as much a part of that team. Where is her compensation? Think about it, ladies. Excuse me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait Before wait a minute. or after taxes? Let, no, let me, at the risk of, of really starting something here, and I did this a couple of years ago, and this is a personal decision that Mike and I made together <laughs> because I feel that... I take care of the booking, I get the clothes from the dry cleaner, the car is full of gas, any number of things that help him to get to the dance. And he does indeed call the dance. I don't do that. But I feel that what I do on the floor in terms of people work is as important as what he's doing behind the microphone. And we came to the decision that we split the money. I won't tell you exactly what the split is, but I do get paid for the dances. And I think that that's fair. Let me a quick comment because I'm the one that, that started out the her money thing. Uh, the pro I can say I have no problem because it's our money, and because I, I'm the one, you know, I go out and and earn the money, and and it get, and it's easier for me to say, yeah, this is our money, than it is than it is for her to say it. And and the problem she had was not in the fact that I was bringing the money or I was saying it was our money. The problem was the fact that she felt that she needed to earn her money, uh, some money. And, and if I spend her money, that's fine. She, the way we do ours, I come home get, and give her the money, and, and she puts the money in the bank, and, and I go about my merry way. She gets all of it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because she's the one home to pay the bills. I'm not home to pay the bills, so she gets all of it. But she still felt that, you know, even though she's doing the work, you know, she does a lot of work. Uh, it's not the same. It's not the same as if you went out and punched a clock and, and made four dollars an hour or whatever it is. Oh yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Unfortunately, the clock is coming to the end. Can we go on for another two hours, Karen? And you were concerned about how we're going to fill all the time. I would be remiss um, if I didn't make a comment and say thank you to my wife, Lene, who is home doing her thing. <laughs> So she can make her money. Take care of your gambling debt. <laughs> Pay off my gambling debt. She is home supervising home health aides. And if I don't say this, she's not going to give me a key to the new house that we're moving into on Friday. <laughs> so she's taking care of all those things. So, Lene, when you listen to the tape, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a nice hand for couple number one, couple number two, three, and four. In a moment, the winning couple will be announced. Thank you all for attending.